So what happens when a ketone or aldehyde reacts with a relatively weak nucleophile? Let's explore this by examining the reaction of acetone with water. Acetone, a ketone, is a pretty decent electrophile. Its LUMO is a pi star CO. Water is a mediocre nucleophile. Its HOMO is an sp3 lone pair on a neutral oxygen atom. When those orbitals interact, the result is this tetrahedral intermediate. This intermediate has a negative charge on one oxygen and a positive charge on another. It's a zwitter ion. In this case, it's quite a high energy intermediate because it has a quite acidic site with a pKa of about zero and a strongly basic site. And it's entropically pretty unfavorable to combine two molecules into just one. So this first step seems pretty poor. In fact, the reverse reaction is quite favorable. However, this intermediate could undergo other reactions, not necessarily the reverse reaction, especially if there's a large excess of solvent around that can facilitate those reactions. One possibility is that the O minus, a strong base, could deprotonate the solvent, which has a pKa of about 16, alleviating that negative charge on our intermediate. The highly acidic OH plus could also be deprotonated by the solvent, giving us a neutral molecule with two OH groups attached to the same carbon. This is called a hydrate. These last two acid-based acid -based steps are neither exothermic nor endothermic, but they are slightly entropically favorable because they spread out the charge. Overall though, this net reaction isn't very favorable. The reverse reaction is preferable. In general, the hydration of ketones and aldehydes has an equilibrium constant much less than one. Your textbook does go into some pretty good detail about exceptions to this, particularly when the carbonyl group is especially electrophilic. With other weak nucleophiles, something similar occurs. The mechanism of the reaction of acetone with methanol looks like this. It follows the same basic pattern of steps. Nucleophile attacks pi star CO to create a tetrahedral intermediate in a pretty unfavorable step. And then a series of proton transfers yields a neutral product. This product with an OH and an OR group attached to the same carbon is called a hemiacetal. Like hydrates, hemiacetals are usually not favored at equilibrium unless the carbonyl group is especially electrophilic, or as in the case of sugars, which you'll learn about in some biology classes and biochemistry, if the hemiacetal forms intramolecularly. Both of the reactions we've discussed in this video, hydrate and hemiacetal formation, can be catalyzed either by acid or by base. These catalysts change the mechanisms slightly. Under acidic conditions, we avoid making negatively charged intermediates, and under basic conditions, we avoid making positively charged intermediates. Both forms of catalysis avoid making the zwitter ionic intermediates, and so have overall somewhat lower activation energy barriers. However, it's important to remember that catalysis doesn't affect equilibrium concentrations. Adding a catalyst doesn't change KEQ. In general, hydrates and hemiacetals aren't actually very important, but they do help us to illustrate a number of mechanistic steps and mechanistic principles that are important across all types of chemical reactions. In the next video, we'll see a more important example, the formation of acetal.